My first question to you is how do you see the elections taking place in Somaliland? Well, first of all, I want to send my congratulations to the people of Somaliland, you know, about the good job they have done recently, you know. You know, the election was about eight or six months, at least, as I guess, as the candidates were going to administrate, you know, what plan or process they need to do in the future in case they are elected. Tonight, our debate is about politics. We will focus on elections in Somaliland. The election commission in Mogadishu and the ongoing are strikes by the Kenyan government to the Somali people in Gedo. We will talk about these issues in details. So stay tuned with us. So here's my colleague Levan. I will ask him about all these questions. Hi Levan, welcome to the episode. Thank you for having me. My first question to you is how do you see the elections taking place in Somaliland? Well, first of all, I want to send my congratulations to the people of Somaliland, you know, about the good job they have done recently, you know, you know, the elections took a long time. That was about eight or six months, at least, as I guess, as the candidates were going to administrate, you know, what plan or process they need to do in the future in case they are elected. Uh, even though it's not yet recognized as a state, but yet, you know, uh, there has been a peaceful process, you know, and uh, development in differentiated parts of the country. And uh, according to the late electionists, I think it's quite interesting thing that Somalia, uh, the government in Mogadishu, should take a lesson uh, from, you know, Hargeza. Do you think that Somaliland is an example of democracy to the Somali government in Mogadishu? It's not only the Somali government in Mogadishu, but Hargeza can also be an example to the whole states of the Horn of Africa. The election or the campaign went through in a peaceful way. In my opinion, that Somaliland is a life example to the Nigerian states, including Ethiopia, Kenya, Djibouti, and Mogadishu itself. Is there any female one in this election? Yes, indeed. Uh, there are, I guess, about two or three who won this election. And uh, I don't know, maybe two or three of them, or are they all going to the upper house, or maybe, of course, to the, you know, a parliament, or are they going to be a member of the parliament? That's not, that's something I'm not sure. But if you're talking about the number of women who were given a chance to, you know, um, be a candidate, uh, that was somehow very limited. Um, it was not enough, I guess, but I hope maybe in the next future, they will increase the number of women, you know, taking part in such, you know, elections. Kenyan war boys are still bombing civilians in Somalia. How long will the Somalia government be in silence? That's a question I'm asking myself too. And, um, you know, uh, ever since the Kenyan government deployed its troops into Somalia, uh, maybe about 10 or 11 or 12 years ago, up to this time, the Kenyans have been doing aggressive things against the Somali community, against the Somali people in their own country, if it's in Gedo or Baladhao or Kiswaya area. And, uh, you know, recently, what we have witnessed is that the Kenyan warplanes were bombing civilians, you know, including women, children, and elderly people. Uh, and yet, the, 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 the wonderful thing in this history is that the Somali government did not yet, you know, act anything. I don't know why are they still silent. So that's the question that goes around the millions of Somali ethnic people in, inside Somalia. Thank you, Liban. Thank you, too. I hope you all the best. We have come to the end of our episode. Thank you for watching. Please hit the subscribe button, like and share our videos. Goodbye.